What's up guys? Today I'm illustrating my OC latte. This here is the very first gift that I made and I just wanted to update her look and align her with the new branding I've had in mind for a while. It's a chunky video so be sure to grab your favorite beverage and let's chill in this portal. As you can see here, I'm taking the original illustration and plopping it into a new file on Procreate. I've been goofing around on Procreate for about two years now, and it's been it's been pretty good. I think that, you know, I've been finding my style, and that's been the hardest thing, because there's so many options. Uh, I'm using it on my iPad Mini in the latest gen of the Apple Pencil, which I've grown to love. I love the Mini because it just feels like with the bigger iPads, I feel like I get overwhelmed by the huge screen. But I just, I just love this iPad. He's my sweet cheese, my good time boy. After prepping my field by putting the original art in the opacity layer, I'm going to grab my sketching brush, the HB pencil brush, which I believe is the original brush on Procreate. Throughout the video, I'll show you brushes that I'm using. Some are modified from Procreate and some are from packs that I've purchased. We'll put the information in the description below, don't worry. While we're here, trying to figure out her updated look, let's chat about Latte a little bit. I started with her story development in 2020, when it seemed like the whole world was looking inwards. At first it was a joke between a friend and I that my exotic dancer name would be Latte Honey. Then Animal Crossing came out and I was like, dang, Latte Honey is a cute and catchy name. After the last few years of working through life shifts like everyone else, and working through art therapy and changing my career, I realized that Latte Honey was in ways becoming this representation of myself and this journey of reclaiming my creativity. With some self-reflection and kind of going through some old sketchbooks, I looked back at the foundations of my creativity to remember that my style was once in the form of storytelling and comic books. And this aspect has kind of in a way gotten lost in translation as I trained as a fashion designer in my undergrad years. Now, don't get me wrong, I was still very animated in my fashion translation of creativity, but once I hit the industry, I kind of got lost. I was kind of starting to get consumed by the idea of fitting in, making things look standardized, concerned of what people thought of me, if I was good enough. I stopped creating for a long time. I eventually got burned out emotionally, physically, and it just kind of over time, started choosing myself and coming back to myself through the accessibilities of therapeutic modalities such as reiki acupuncture and of course you know art therapy but now that we're here in present day with a career change and creating again and really just stepping into who i am i realized that my creativity never really left i've been working on building this universe with latte in a storytelling comic book format uh, it's a work in progress, so I'm not really too ready to get into the details of it, but I'm pretty excited to spend more time with it this summer, diving deeper into it now that I'll be done with grad school. For now, the premise is Latte, uh, with she, her pronouns, runs a coffee shop in a small town and falls in love with the love of her life. And all the stories in between kind of are reflections of things that I've kind of gone through. And I just kind of want to like share it in this way. So yeah, story aside, she's the face of my storefront where I make small batch runs of clothing, accessories, and stickers, just like a coffee shop would, you know, with all their treats and stuff. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. Back to what's happening here. I had to pull out my sketchbook for reference. I very much still love the pencil to paper element in sketching. It's my go-to. Digital is still pretty new for me. So just kind of like, getting used to digital. So here I'm just really trying to solidify the way that I want Latte Honey's mouth to look. Uh, it's just, it was a real struggle, real struggle. So you can see the step-by-step -step process of that.
I had to take a break to do some reference research on Pinterest, feel like comic book mouths and stuff like that, but I think I got it. I think this is the one. Alright, so this took a minute to get to this point, but now I'm pretty happy with her look. This is kind of where now I'm putting the animation assist on through the wrench icon in Procreate. So what it does is it takes the layer that you aren't working on and it grays it out in the background so you can still see everything that you worked on in the previous layer. Uh, it's faster than opacifying each layer traditionally and less messy and you can keep the groups together as well so that's really nice. I had to edit out this section of the process due to my head being in the way, but here are some individual layers of making her a one-eye wink. As you can see, each layer builds on itself, the dark blue being the front, forefront of the illustration that I was working on in the sequence. Now that I have the basics down, I run through the animated version and just make adjustments to it, just to make sure that it's looking fluid, looking streamlined, looking seamless. With the final run through check, I'm just going to make sure everything looks good. I'll add my reference photo and color just to see what it looks like side by side while I'm inking just to keep the same vibe going. I choose my go-to brush, the one that I found over the two years that I've really liked. Um, this one is a modified calligraphy preset brush from Procreate, and I've just made it a little bit more seamless to my liking. Here I add a new layer to do some final line work on top of the sketch. So by keeping these grouped together in the layer and by each sequence, it keeps them organized and doesn't get messy because every time that you make a new layer outside of the group, it makes a new animation slide, so it kind of helps you keep organized and seeing where you are working. So now starting with the line work, I always make sure that I'm on the right layer because it can be really frustrating otherwise when you're working on the wrong layer and you've done all this line work and you can't get rid of what's behind it. So I lower the opacity of the sketch under it so that I can draw on top of it as a reference. Kind of a good cheat code, you know?
Now that I clean my desk and have the first layer of line work done, it's time for the next layer where her right eye is starting to close. I redraw each slide just to have more motion in the GIF, though to save some time you could just draw the key elements that you're moving. Either way it works, but I obviously like to do more work. It's just in my blood. I set up the same manner as the first one, making the groups, making sure that everything is on the right layer. And the one thing I haven't really mentioned was that my eraser brush is always the same as the brush I'm using in inking. This helps with the consistency of strokes and like redoing. Even though I've constantly have been checking to make sure the animation's in a fluid sequence, I'm still checking it now as I'm inking just to make sure it's still looking cohesive and smooth. I had to stop filming because my iPhone was constantly running out of storage. Um, if you know, you know. It sucks. But I believe I finished these frames, or all the other frames, uh, without filming. Just because, you know, when you get into the groove, you just want to finish something without creating interruptions. So here we are, everything is finished up. Now that the line work's done, I'm going to do the fill color. Here I'm using the Max U Gouache Natural Brush from the Retro Max Pack. I modified it to two slightly different ways in my illustration style. One's more opaque, one's more solid. Um, right now I'm using the more opaque one for the hair. Pulling back out the reference for my hair highlights and now I'm just going to start kind of basing it off of my reference. The thing I really like about this brush is the depth and the texture it gives. Layering is very satisfying. This is another solid Max U gouache brush. It's just a wash, like a really light wash. This brush here is the Edge 2.0, and it was a brush from the All-Star Pack from True Grit, from Texture, 
texturesupply.com and I'll have everything linked below, like I said before. I generally use this brush for shadowing and it works perfectly for a latte's lips. Now I'm using the second version of the Maxi Gouache Natural Brush where it's the more solid one and I'm going to use this for the background. This brush I really like as well for the background just to give it a painterly and textured look to it. And with every frame it also makes it move and it still looks very seamless like it's painted. Now we're going to do this method that I did for this last frame for all three layers. To save some time, I copy over the high yellow highlights to the next layer and we'll add or subtract to the highlights, just giving it a wavy look, making it look like it's moving. I always keep the last layer I worked on grayed out in the background, but if I used a slide previous, I will just hide it. Um, this I can see where the highlight was so that I can kind of alter it a little bit and it's just a great reference. From here on out, it's pretty much the same process until the end, so I'll just speed it up a little bit, we'll jam out, and I'll come back on to chat. See you soon.
All right, I'm back. Here are all the layers of the gift that are colored and ready to go. So here I'm going to add the background like I did before with the Maxu uh, gouache brush. And I just wanted to make this GIF to be over used over videos instead of having a full screen function um, with like a colored background and then the illustration in the middle. Uh, I just want to be versatile in its use. I'm minimizing and unchecking all the layer groups just to stay organized to see where I'm at on the which layer. Here I have the completed first layer with their background ready to go. So I will make this go into the gray mode and go on to the next layer. In the next layer, I'll just mimic the background, but change it just a little bit. Now I'm going to do this for all the layers. I just wanted to talk a little bit about my drawing style and how it's come to be. And I'm just really excited about how it's transforming. I, as you know, I've been trained as a fashion designer. I like studied a lot of comic book illustrations. I also grew up around art as my parents are both artists. And I just, I've been trying the last year, last couple of years to get away from the fashion illustration style that I've been doing, but it still seeps in. I'm really excited about Latte's transformation into my style now and the way everything looks and yeah, you'll see more and more of that. So at this point, you've witnessed the whole production of creating this latte gif. I'm checking it over again um, just to see the work in action. I'm going to make some fine tune edits on things that I don't like, like maybe a brush stroke is a little out of whack or something's just not right. So I'm just going to fix it here. Here's the overall time lapse of the drawing while I do that. So you can see from start to finish all the corrections and edits that I made. Overall, I'm pretty happy with this design. The best part about doing these gifts is that it gives multiple facial expressions of latte to use along the way. If you made it to this point in the video, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Make sure you like and subscribe and maybe share with a friend. I'm just so happy to be able to show you my, my process and explain it a little bit. If you have any questions, please drop them below in the comment section. I'll get to them in the next creative video that I do. I think that would be a fun way to interact and just kind of like talk about things, have some talking points. I'm still fa fairly new at this, so it's a little hard for me to figure out what to talk about. And yeah, before I sign off here, here's a little preview of what's to come next. I'm really excited about some things that I'm working on, so here's a preview. Thank you guys again. Make sure you stick around for the next video. It's all about my shop update. Catch you next time.